presented by the official rare coin and bullion dealer of the National Rifle Association, Universal Coin and Bullion. Artillery and belt-fed machine guns dominated the battlefield during World War I. What the infantry needed was mobile firepower, and the German answer to that question was the Maxim 0815, basically taking their full MG08 and turning it into a gun that one man could carry. The 0815 Maxim was the, uh, the German attempt, rather late in the war, to come up with a, uh, a light machine gun, something that would be uh, similar to the British Lewis gun uh, that the, the British and Americans were using on the, uh, on the Western Front. The 08-15 uh, is the uh, designation uh, for the model of 1908 modified to 1915. It's really a, a miniaturized version of the, uh, of the standard German machine gun of the Great War, the uh, 1908 Maxim gun. The mechanism of the 08 was largely unchanged. Um, still had the same receiver, the same bolt, the same barrel, the same uh, water-cooled jacket. But they did away with the heavy sled mount, added a bipod, a pistol grip, and a shoulder stock. And in addition, I mean, it had a, a, a heavy leather sling. The 0815, although it was uh, considered a light machine gun, was literally anything but. It, uh, it weighed 42 pounds, and that was without the, the Trommel magazine, which is uh, the assault drum mag that held 100 rounds of uh, eight millimeter Mauser in a cloth belt. Uh, 42 pounds, it held five pints of water. Uh, it weighed well over 50 pounds, uh, by the time you added the ammunition and the uh, and a full uh, water jacket complement to the gun, so the gun is uh, designated uh, 1915. It actually uh, didn't go into production until 1916 and didn't actually make it into the frontline trenches until 1917. It wasn't really until the Operation Michelle offensive uh, in, uh, in the spring of 1918 uh, that the gun saw widespread use. It was the most uh, widely made and issued machine gun of the war. At least 130,000 were made between 1916 and 1918. The, the bipod was clearly inspired by the Lewis gun. It clamped to the jacket, and it could be mounted anywhere along the jacket's length, anywhere from the muzzle to just in front of the receiver. Clamping the bipod just behind the muzzle provided more stability, but if you moved it back to, to just in front of the receiver, you had a much wider field of fire. Recently, an author wrote that in 1914, the German army had, in one three and a half kilometer section of trench, about 10 Maxim 08 machine guns. By 1918, that same section of trench, three and a half kilometers long, had about 130 uh, Maxims and Maxim 08 15s. Uh, it's to show you exactly how strong the Germans felt uh, the need for machine guns was on the, uh, on the Western Front in the trench warfare. Every inch of trench line by, uh, by the spring of 1918 had covering fire from at least one, if not three, Maxim 08s or 0815 machine guns. German Maxim machine guns were sometimes referred to as Spandaus by Allied soldiers because most of the guns were made at the German arsenal in Spandau. And Spandau was marked you know, in big letters uh, across the top of the receiver. The 0815, it's big and it's heavy and it's awkward to carry. But by the standard of the day, I mean, we're talking, you know, the First World War. I mean, it really was one of the most portable 
you know, ineffective uh, machine guns available at the time. Because the 0815 was so popular on the, uh, the German lines and relatively portable, a lot of them were brought home uh, by uh, souveniring American soldiers at the end of the war. And they have found their ways into uh, American Legion and VFW halls. Uh, if a gun was uh, registered uh, during the 1968 uh, National Firearms Act registration period, if it was registered up until then, uh, they're very moderately priced uh, belt-fed machine guns. Uh, they, they work very well, and uh, if under the right conditions you can clamp it down, they're, they're very accurate. They're a lot of fun to shoot. They're certainly not as expensive or as heavy as a full-fledged 08 Maxim, although they're not as portable or as uh, historically interesting as, say, the, uh, the, the Browning 1917. The 0815 makes a, uh, a great conversation piece wherever it's on display. I have this old gun brought to you by Universal Coin and Bullion, the official rare coin and bullion dealer of the National Rifle Association. Visit us online for other I Have This Old Gun videos at AmericanRifleman.org.